Hi, my name is Martin Costa and I'm a veterinary ophthalmologist showing you today an intracapsular lens extraction in a dog. Here we see the lens in the anterior chamber of the eye. This patient has been anesthetized and aseptically prepared for surgery. We begin the surgery with a partial thickness corneal incision using this beaver blade. The incision spans anywhere from 120 to 180 degrees around the superior aspect of the cornea depending on patient size and lens size. Incision depth is about three quarters into the cornea. And we go in one continuous motion around the cornea. You'll note this video has in various parts been sped up and edited for brevity. This surgery takes about 30 to 45 minutes depending on the specifics of the procedure. Once the corneal incision has been made, we then incise into the eye using this keratome. This is a three millimeter stab incision, and you'll see the vitreous being released from the eye. There's some pigment admixed with the vitreous, and that's also coming forward. We use a viscoelastic agent, such as Hylartin, to maintain the shape of the globe, to help with lens positioning, and to keep the iris out of the corneal wound. I'm then here using some scissors to trim or cut off the protruding vitreous so that I can place a stay suture in the central cornea which will help with positioning of the eye and moving the cornea later on in the surgery. You'll see some more vitreous slowly protruding from within the stab incision. This is an 8-0 vicral and we'll use that in our closure as well. I then use corneal section scissors to enlarge and complete the incision. These are scissors curved to go towards the left and in a minute will go towards the right. You'll see aqueous humor being released from the incision as well as more vitreous humor. During surgery we also are sure to keep the cornea well lubricated by using balanced salt solution that's been edited out. We're now delivering the lens using, using a lens loop below the lens and placing counter pressure with a psychodialysis spatula on the other side. The lens has vitriol attachments and so it wants to suck back in. You can see those here with the lens loop. So we get a pair of scissors and trim off that vitriol attachment as we gently move the lens out of the eye. If you kept on pulling with anterior attraction on the lens, you pull on the vitreous more, and that could induce further complications such as hemorrhage or retinal detachment. Here I'm trimming all around to get those vitreal attachments off the lens. We'll take care of the vitreous later on with the vitrectomy and the lens is delivered and removed from the surgical field. You'll see some hemorrhage has occurred during that process that will be dealt with later. I then start the corneal closure using that same adovicrol, the stay suture, in the center of the cornea. I like to place three cardinal sutures along the incision to help keep the cornea opposed appropriately so that we don't end up with an overlapping section as we close the entirety of the cornea later on. And much of the suturing again has been sped up for brevity of this video. Here's the second cardinal suture. Remove the scope so we can see what we're doing a little better. And here's the third cardinal suture. I took the opportunity to use this third cardinal suture to complete the corneal closure to the right of the surgical field using a simple continuous pattern. And these suture bites are going about three quarters depth into the cornea, not full thickness and then out through the sclera on the other side.
Can we tie that knot? And now use irrigation aspiration to remove the hemorrhage from the globe, remove that air bubble, and make sure it's formed up. This also removes all the remaining viscoelastic agent that was put in during the lens extraction procedure. In this case, I chose to perform automated vitrectomy with this vitrector unit. This goes in and gently cuts up and extracts the vitreous from the anterior chamber. This is an anterior vitrectomy. We don't like vitreous to come forward into the incision as we're closing it, as this will interfere with pupillary motion. And we can get more adhesions this way, and that can lead to further complications such as glaucoma. It went on for longer than that, but I've edited it out. Here I'm placing a wax cell or a cellulose sponge on the cornea just to protect the retina from the high intensity operating microscope light. And we complete the corneal closure, starting from the left hand side of the image, which is the lateral aspect, and proceeding medially. I prefer to use atovicrol for this surgery, and a simple continuous pattern is all I found to be necessary. Sutures are placed approximately every millimeter. tightening the sutures to make sure that we don't have any leakage and tying the first run so I can complete a second run for the more medial aspect. These sutures will dissolve. Typically between three and four weeks we see the dissolution process. This eye was left without a lens, so aphakic. Some surgeons might choose to place a sulcus intraocular lens sutured in place behind the iris. But this dog had excellent vision postoperatively, if blurry, and had good functional navigation. After the final suture is tied, we leak check the incision and check the tone of the globe. It is already reinflated with aqueous humor. Thank you for watching.